One weekend in February 1978, a young man named Stephen Kubaki went missing. Kubaki was a student at Hope College in Michigan. At the time, he was preparing to go to a scenic cross-country skiing spot around Lake Michigan for some skiing. Kubaki really loved this winter sport and went skiing many times every year. Who would have thought that this time when he went, Kubaki would suddenly vanish without a trace? The skiing location was also very tense. They had sent out search teams on land, sea, and air, but they couldn't find him. Not long after, the search team actually found Kubaki's footprints by the shore of Lake Michigan. Following this trail of footprints that extended over 200 meters, the prints mysteriously disappeared. At the point where they ended, there were no signs of a struggle whatsoever. Later, someone discovered Kubaki's backpack and skis at another location. The search team couldn't provide a logical explanation for these strange phenomena, so they could only conclude that Kubaki must have fallen into Lake Michigan and drowned. However, Kubaki's stubborn father refused to accept this conclusion. His gut told him his son wasn't dead, so he hired a private investigator to search everywhere. But did Kubaki actually die or not? We'll get back to that story in a bit. First, let's go to a physics laboratory to tour something. Fast forward to 2017 at the National Accelerator Laboratory of the U.S. Department of Energy. Here, they have the world's most powerful X-ray laser machine. What kind of experiment do the researchers need to conduct? They plan to use this machine to fire a single laser pulse directly at the largest atom in a molecule to blast it apart. As we know, molecules are formed by combining atoms, and atoms themselves are made up of an atomic nucleus surrounded by orbiting electrons. So the researchers set the laser pulse, like a billiard ball, to knock the electrons out of their orbits. Initially, only a tiny number of electrons may remain to potentially form a new atomic structure. The laser pulse fires in pulses, like a heartbeat, allowing it to achieve extremely high energy levels for an ultra-short time. But unexpectedly, the experiment results overturned everyone's understanding. In the early stage, Everything happened as the scientists imagined. The pulsed beam penetrated the largest atom, and the orbiting electrons were blown away like scattered billiard balls. But just as the researchers expected some new structure to form, something completely unforeseen occurred. Suddenly, an extremely strange point appeared inside the atom, and a large number of electrons were immediately sucked into this point within one one hundred thousand 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 second. Dozens of electrons were absorbed into that point, and then the molecule exploded. The researchers were dumbfounded. It was just like a black hole, except this was a miniature, molecular scale version. I'm sure you're all familiar with the concept of a black hole. This notion originated from Einstein's theory of general relativity, though he called it a singularity rather than a black hole. Einstein said that in the singularities of the universe, an extremely dense material with infinite mass could potentially exist. Later, a German physicist named Schwarzschild took this seed from Einstein's theory, cultivated it into a towering tree, calculated this celestial body through equations, and named it a black hole. After that, the English physicist Stephen Hawking devoted his life to proving black holes exist. To put it simply, a black hole is another type of celestial body in the universe with an extremely large mass, surrounded by an incredibly powerful gravitational field because it has distorted space-time. Any planet or star passing by is unable to escape its gravitational pull. Even light gets sucked in. In general, we need to either observe an object's own light emissions or reflected light to detect a celestial body. But since black holes absorb all light, we fundamentally cannot observe their existence directly. It's worth noting that the light referred to here includes not just visible light, but also infrared, ultraviolet, and other wavelengths that can be detected by modern instruments. The Accelerator Lab researchers were thinking that, regardless, they couldn't observe or probe this strange point any further. Plus, it could absorb the surrounding electrons, so did this signal prove that black holes may exist not just in the macrocosm, but potentially at the quantum microscopic level too? So the researchers directly published a paper in Nature calling it a molecular black hole. 
They believe that in the quantum realm, this type of black hole could possibly be formed by electromagnetic forces or the laser pulses in the lab. In other words, anywhere with high enough energy concentrations may be able to create these mini black holes. So the issue then arises, if black holes can be large enough to swallow entire planets in the universe, and small enough on the molecular scale to absorb electrons, does that mean they could also exist at varying distances, thousands of light years away in remote space or nearby right here on Earth next to us? As it turns out, there are such places. To date, there are 12 locations recognized as areas where aircraft or ships regularly go missing under strange circumstances. Over the South Atlantic, there is an extremely bizarre area that experts call the South Atlantic Anomaly. In 2016, Japan launched a satellite called Hitomi, meaning pupil, with the intention of using this eye to gaze deeply into the universe, mainly to study cosmic energy. But less than a month after launch, the satellite was suddenly torn apart. No one in the world knew what happened, and this satellite cost NASA and Japan $270 million to launch. How could it just break apart like that? After investigation, they discovered that when Hitomi passed through the South Atlantic Anomaly area, it encountered some kind of issue. This region occasionally releases an extremely powerful short burst of radiation, like a pulse wave. Hitomi was scanned by this radiation burst and tragically destroyed. And it's not just satellites. Over the past few decades, dozens of spacecraft have been scanned by this radiation burst, some found in pieces, others disappearing entirely. That's why the International Space Station now uses special shielding when passing through this area to avoid being blasted apart. But why does this area have such powerful radiation? After inspection, they found the electromagnetic fields here are abnormally strong, possibly forming what's called a time vortex. The time vortex theory, proposed by Einstein, suggests that the four-dimensional space-time around Earth becomes twisted into a vortex due to the planet's rotation. This time vortex carries an enormous electromagnetic force that can instantaneously become something akin to the molecular black holes mentioned earlier. So aircraft passing by the vicinity of these electromagnetic black holes are extremely unfortunate. But since this isn't a gravitational field, but rather an electromagnetic one, it's easier to avoid. Just install special shielding on the aircraft to prevent getting sucked in or blasted apart. Let's go back to the story about the young man, Stephen Kubaki, who went missing that we started earlier. The story goes that 14 months after his disappearance, Kubaki reappeared in Massachusetts, over a thousand kilometers away from where he vanished. Kubaki said that when he regained consciousness, he found himself lying on a grassy area in the city of Pittsfield, Massachusetts. Kubaki couldn't recall how he got there, his memory was clear up until the point before he went missing. Essentially, he didn't remember being missing for 14 months and thought he was just about to go skiing. The only thing he remembered about the disappearance was feeling extremely cold and afraid of getting lost in the dark and frigid conditions. The key strange point in Kubaki's disappearance case involves a discontinuity in time and space. There was a gap, it wasn't continuous. What does this mean? In life, you have to go through 2021 to enter 2022, and only then can you reach 2023, right? But if you went from the very last moment of December 31st, 2021, directly to the new year 2023, that would be a discontinuous jump in the time sequence. It's like in life. If you want to climb a mountain, first you have to get to the base, then make your way up the slopes, before finally reaching the summit. If you skipped the middle section and just appeared at the top without parachuting from a plane or helicopter, that would be a discontinuity in space-time called an instantaneous shift. When people first encounter bizarre phenomena like this, their initial reaction is usually to ignore it and say it's nonsense. Because if they acknowledge it, it disrupts their basic life experiences and makes the world feel very disorienting. You don't know what to believe anymore. It wasn't until human knowledge expanded systematically and seemingly rational explanations emerged that people began taking these unfounded things seriously. 
A black hole is a strange singularity in the universe, an anomaly with extreme mass that distorts the fabric of space-time around it. We can be certain that time inside a black hole is different from outside, though exactly how is unknown. Maybe one minute inside equals 10,000 years outside, or perhaps it's one ten-thousandth of a second. This can reasonably explain many bizarre space-time phenomena. And black holes don't necessarily have to be thousands of light years away. They could be nearby, even on the molecular scale or right here on Earth. So in Kubaki's case, it's easy to explain. He may have been pulled into a black hole over Lake Michigan, and when he emerged on the other side, he ended up in Massachusetts over a thousand kilometers away through an instantaneous shift. The minutes or seconds he experienced in the black hole translated to 14 months passing on Earth. That's why Kubaki had no memory of that interim space-time. Besides the black hole aspect in Kubaki's disappearance, there's another type involved. It's actually not black, and not necessarily a hole. It could be called a space-time gateway, since it can also create phenomena like time jumps and instantaneous teleportation across space. Tales of these space-time gateway phenomena exist in the mythologies of many cultures. In the Old Testament of the Bible, the story of the Israelite prophet Moses going up Mount Jabal Musa to receive the Ten Commandments from God involves a space-time gateway. Moses didn't meet God waiting at the mountaintop. There was a space-time gateway at the summit that Moses passed through to encounter God. In fact, Moses made this journey twice to receive the Ten Commandments tablets. The first time, he brought back stone tablets inscribed with the Ten Commandments, though the wording passed down today among Jewish sects varies slightly. But Moses felt he had only met with Jehovah God briefly. When he returned, he found the Israelites worshipping a golden calf idol, having lost faith after Moses was gone for forty days. Enraged, Moses smashed those tablets to pieces. After the Israelites repented, Moses went to receive the commandments from God a second time, bringing back the tablets now placed in the Ark of the Covenant. It sounds like Moses just walked through the clouds on Mount Jabal Musa, but it was actually a space-time gateway leading to another dimensional realm where God existed, where the concept of time differed, a moment there equaled 40 days in the regular world. In Einstein's theories, Black holes are proposed as the entrance and exit points of a Rosen bridge, a narrow wormhole connecting two regions of space-time, often called a wormhole. The wormhole is the entire tunnel, while you can't see what's inside just from the outside entrance, the black hole, or how deep it goes. Stories of people falling into black holes or wormholes on Earth, like Kubaki's case today, are not that uncommon, but the outside world only knows that most who enter can't come back out and become missing persons cases. A rare few accidentally stumble in and out, becoming urban legend figures like Kubaki. Even rarer are those with special abilities who can freely enter and exit the space-time gateways or are called in and sent back out. These tend to be individuals with very strong intuition, like Moses becoming the central figure in mythological tales. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, please share it with a friend. You can subscribe to catch future videos, or if you have more time, check out some of the other videos on this channel.